I'm sorry, I, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Did you really say that 32-bit machines are obsolete? What? All right, I got a major issue in my life here. You know me as the old hardware guy. Here's some more old hardware. We'll talk more about it in a second. The reason we're here is because the machine in my office, my beloved Dell Dimension, I don't remember the model number, with the last of the Pentium 4 chips, has finally been obsoleted on me. Now, that's not to say the machine is obsolete. It works. How still? I don't know. Uh, but the problem is the software that I run, a particular type of software that I run on it, I no longer have any options for that software to run under a 32-bit environment. It's not as simple as just installing a 64-bit operating system because the fucking processor doesn't support it. It's only a 32-bit processor, so there's nothing to do. I had options. One option would be I have this Lenovo machine that YouTuber Tollboy gave me a while ago. And I decided this morning to take a look at the specs on it, and it's just this much slower than my video editing rig. I could get by with that, but I said, you know what, as long as I'm doing it, this was supposed to be the replacement for the machine in my office. And at the time when I said that, the video editing rig that I have didn't exist, because the uh, YouTube video editor was still available. So editing on a PC was not, you know, it was just on, on the web. There was nothing needed, but now it's needed. There's a drive in there. There is nothing in there. Definitely a drive in there. I'm sure it won't eject, but that's okay. Uh, this is a Dell. That's pretty much all they ever told me at Tiny Middle. Yeah, I need memory for my computer. Okay, what do you got? Uh, it's a Dell. What do I need? I want 4 gig. This was in the old days. What's the model number? It's a Dell. Yeah, but I need the model number so I can find out exactly what kind of RAM that your machine takes. Uh, dementia. Well, this one doesn't have dementia. It, it had, it, it was inspired, but now it's in the past tense as Inspiron. Inspiron. So it's no longer inspired. Uh, I know nothing about this machine. Actually, I know a lot more than you think about it. Uh, let's see, there's a service tag and express service code. Oh, hey, it's got a manufacturing date on it. Shit, I can't wait. This is probably not going to work. 2009. September 28th, 2009. Came with Windows 7 Home Premium. This might be useless, but it was the plan that I had. I have other plans still. But I can't believe that I have to retire my Pentium 4 machine. I don't have to. I could do the 64-bit stuff on another machine, but it's just, it's getting to the point with that machine that I just gotta, it's gotta go already. It can be repurposed elsewhere, but as far as daily use, it's, it's not really cutting it anymore. So I have no idea what kind of processor is in here or anything. Let's get the side panel popped. Actually, before we do that, we'll take a look at the back, and I already know that this adventure, uh, should it pan out, is going to cost me money. Because it doesn't have what I need. You got your sound, the six plugs there, so it could do the 
surrounds. Did anybody ever use those? I never did. I never had fancy. Actually, I have a set somebody gave me. I never hooked it up. I have no use for that shit. That's why I never heard it. It's got ether webs, four USBs, two on the front, and only VGA. This does not also have HDMI out. If it had HDMI out, we'd be golden. But it doesn't. And it's a small form factor machine. So now I have to buy a small form factor video card for this. I don't think the one I have in the current video editing rig, because the plan is, if this is faster, to replace that machine with this. I don't think this is going to end up working out. Let's pop the case. we got more of a story to tell. My friend Matt gave me this machine some years ago. It certainly was not in the 2009 realm. It was probably more like 2015, maybe 2014. It was This machine was kind of removed from service from whoever used to own it or use it or anything. I know there are two hard drives in here. Let's uh, let's see what uh, what lurks. A little bit of dust on the processor fan. A couple of memory chips. So two gigabytes. I don't know. I'm gonna need a minimum of four. Yeah. So let's see. We got cobwebs, dust. Looks like bad news on the doorstep. There's a small fan over here. A fan in the power supply that I do not have a replacement for. Although, probably a standard ATX would work, yeah, to get by for a few days if need be. It has... From what I can tell, oh no, it does have PCI Express right here. There's a X1 and an X16 lane, I think. I remember a certain twerp, I was asking if he had white slots or black slots. I didn't call them white or black. I said, is it PCI or PCI Express? And never did get an answer to that. Oh well. He lost out big time. And he's a loser in life, so what do you expect? Heat sink is uh, still nice and tight. That's good. This is later than a Pentium 4, and it's definitely for... Um, uh, I'm sorry, 64-bit. There are two hard drives in here. Now, let's see, how did this go? you got to pull this guy... I hope you don't... Yeah, you shouldn't need to take the front off. But maybe this will just give us a little more access. It looks like this stuff is... Well, that's kind of a pain in the dick. Oh, come on. Why? I don't need this tie-down shit. Now it's bent. I don't think it matters, really. This comes out. Doesn't it? Yeah. See? Told you it did. There. I could bend that back a bit. So it looks like you can't see any better. That's good. There are two hard drives in here that are identical. They are Seagate one terabyte drives. That I recall. Yes, that's correct. They are identical. This machine supports RAID on board. I had set this up. We're kind of picking up where I left off. I had set this up when I first got it, and it was to be on the ready for my office machine when that fails. But uh, that didn't happen. So it's been sitting. And I still know nothing about this until we get it powered up. But we're going to do that in a bit. 
one thing I remember is I somehow stumbled into one of these one terabyte drives for free. Being that both of these drives are identical, I would imagine it came to me without a hard drive being removed from service. I get it, but I was more than happy to purchase one, so I purchased one. And the other was some sort of warranty uh, uh, claim. And I ended up with a uh, second hard drive. This machine, this board, supports RAID on board. So I said, oh, well, as long as I'm doing that, let me go and set this up for RAID 0. I tr I, I'm going to try to remember this stuff because it's just been so many years. RAID 0 is a stripe, and RAID 1 is a mirror. Might have that backwards. I set it up as a stripe, and basically what that means is it writes some of the data to this drive and some of the data to that, to that drive in a stripe. And then the other part of the stripe is there. And then the next stripe, and the next stripe. And I know it doesn't go this way. I get that. I'm just giving a visual here. So it writes the data. You end up with um, two gigabytes, roughly. Two, I'm sorry, two terabytes roughly, but a little less because there's something lost in the translation. Uh, but much faster performance because now you got two drives doing the job of one. So both could be reading, both could be writing, and you get a speed increase. Well, the problem is if either drive fails, you lose everything. It's unrecoverable, and you're done. RAID 1 is a mirror Whatever is written to one drive is also written to the other. If either drive fails, you replace the offending drive, and it can rebuild the array for you. Nothing lost, and the machine, after that process is complete, will boot back up and everything's good. So if I recall, I did it first as a stripe, and then I said... I'm too chicken shit on that, and I really didn't see that much perform performance boost, so I said, you know what, let's go for the mirror. And these days, and the idea of all of that, I, I'm not even concerned, because I don't think another machine that I've had since has had mirror capability. This machine does not support having any more drives than that. You are in my way, so I'm going to move you to here. And I want to poke around a little bit and see. There are four SATA connections on board. And, oh, that would be another thing to look at. Hmm. There are four SATA connections on board. Three are used, one for each hard drive and one for the DVD RW drive, which leaves one free. That's excellent. Um, that's really all I need as far as that goes. Um, front panel audio connection, front panel USB. Is that another USB? You probably can't see what I'm pointing to. No, that's okay. You don't need to. I don't know if this machine, this board, supports the optional Dell breakout slot cover thingamajobber for PS2 keyboard and mouse. If it does, that would be a nice plus, but I don't know. So what I'm going to do now is shut the camera for a minute, and I'm going to inspect the board and be disappointed. And then we'll um, come back and try to boot this up after fuck knows how many years. Probably nine? We'll go with nine. Remember what I said about old hardware guy? This uses USB. I had to break out a keyboard. I think this is the Yes Butte wireless keyboard. There's a link to that in the prescription. And over here is a... A light up gaming mouse. It says game start, but I don't remember ever doing a video for that. So I don't know what it is. And 
box probably doesn't say anything, so I'll probably never find that link. We are ready to power this thing up after probably nine years. It's not plugged in. I just wanted to get the monitor on. Okay. It says it's going to sleep. That's fine. Let's go ahead. Plug in the power cord. I think the orange light there kind of blinked a little. And let's see if it still powers on after all these years or if this entire thing is cocked over after so many. Oh, that's awesome. It really doesn't power on anymore? It seriously is dead? Wow. There's an amber light in there. The back of the power supply has a green light, but it's awfully dim. Hmm. I, uh, yeah, this is not something that I haven't seen before. I'd imagine it's probably the power supply. That's wonderful. That was a lot of talk about nothing. Holy fuck. Okay, I just went and punched in the express service code for this. Um, <clears throat> obviously, as you might expect, Dell has changed their website since I used to play with it many years ago. And as such, I can't find the original bill of materials for this machine. 2009, like it says, warranty expired in 2011. That's all the info I got. What kind of processor? How much memory? The memory is easy to look at. The processor, I'd rather not take it out to find out. Could be an E5200 Intel. If it is, that's very similar, if not the exact processor, that's in my existing video editing rig. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know <laughs> anymore. Um, this could have potentially faster processor. I don't know, but I can't get it booted up because it won't fucking turn on. So it's time that I get my hands dirty. But I think we'll leave this off at part one right here, and then I will go ahead and get into it in the next video. And we'll uh, try a couple things, see if we can get it to fire up, and see why it's being recalcitrant. Yeah, use it or lose it, I didn't, and I lost. Let's see if I can get it back. We'll see in an upcoming part. Thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.